All right, for this video, we're doing a little parts overview for a future build that's coming out uh, probably in a few weeks. I'm still waiting for the frame for this build, so that's why I'm going to do an overview first, and then I'll do a separate video on the build, and then uh, probably another video later on flight performance. But this is going to be a bigger build, so I've got some pretty big motors here. Uh, they sent some motors, four motors, a flight stack, and some props, and the props here are these pretty they're, they're pretty big there's eight and a half by five pitch so they're an eight and a half inch prop uh, from the cine line this is uh from t motor i believe so the packaging for the props this is tmotorhobby.com is the website but the actual website that these parts are being sold on is called t hobby so for example this velox brand here is actually a t motor brand but then you can see here it's called T Hobby. So I think T Hobby and T Motor are basically the same company. And I got four of these uh, Cine 66 Pro 1100 KV motors. So they're pretty hefty, obviously for an eight and a half inch build. I believe on the specs I'll show you here in a second, this is uh, intended for an eight and a half inch or nine inch prop. So I am going to, of course, do the build on this prop first and you'll see that initially but then the frame i got is a 10 inch frame so here's what the frame looks like i think this is a clone of a kep rc frame that is no longer being produced but i think it should work pretty well and it's for 10 inch props but of course it'll work for smaller props so i'll initially do a uh, fly it around on an eight and a half inch prop and then we'll do a 10 inch i believe I'll do a folding prop for that video. That'll be quite a bit down the line. Probably won't see that for a couple of months. But yeah, I don't have this frame yet. I ordered it on Amazon, but it apparently is coming from China. So it is a little bit delayed going through customs. So this is the stack they sent me, the V70ASE8S. So it's an ESC plus a F7 stack. So it also will run on 8S. But of course, I'm going to be running this on 6S. But just uh, some of the specs here, if you want to pause the video on this particular stack, we'll look at the actual components here shortly. It does appear to have the AM32 firmware for the ESC and has a peak current of 75 amps. Flight stack does have Bluetooth there, so if you want to connect, I think with using the SpeedyB app uh, via Bluetooth on your phone, you can, you know, you know have, don't have to bring a computer or a laptop out to the field if you want to change any of your beta flight settings. It does come with 128 megabytes of black box data as well. Opening up the box, you can see the flight stack here, and it does have this little diagram here for the flight controller, so you can see where some of the solder pads are and what they actually mean. And they are labeled on the flight controller as well as you can see here, but they, um, in case you're not sure, uh, they are on this little card as well. It does appear to be that this is the top side of the board, so that's kind of nice if you want to do any soldering of your wires, it'll be on the top side. But they also offer connectors here on the bottom side. And this is what the bottom of the board looks like. And you can see the naming there, the Velox F7SE. Looks like you got two uh, BECs on here. Probably it's by 5 volt and a 9 volt USB-C there for your connector. And I believe this right here is the Bluetooth radio. That's why the little antenna, this is the antenna part sticking out of the side. And that's so that you can connect to some sort of a app, probably a speed to be app. And then uh, change your settings via Bluetooth, but overall looks like a very solid, you know, looking flight controller, F7 flight controller. And here's the card for the 4-in-1 ESC. And the ESC comes with this warning sticker that's wrapped around here like this. And it basically says it must be used with the uh, ESC that came with this board. But here's what the ESC looks like. Very nice, big pads for your motor wires and yeah, you have them on both sides looks like the board is conformal coated as well so should be able to handle some small amount of uh, splashes and or damp grass shouldn't be a problem you have your connector there but no solder pads for the motor um well, the uh, connector goes to the flight controller you'll have to use the included uh connector that comes in the kit and again it's it's a uh, Conformal coated on both sides. All right, so you get an XT60 connector, and then here's a package of wires. 
So for those of you that don't uh, want to solder, they do offer a bunch of wires here to use those connectors on the bottom side of the flight controller. And that's what these, uh, these are for. And then you get a couple of these pretty large uh, capacitors. They're not the same size. So obviously for different voltages, so 50 volts, 1000 microfarads, I think that's for an ADA setup. And then the other one is a 35 volt, uh, 1000 microfarad. This is probably for a 6S setup. And then in, in the bag with these capacitors are all the rubber grommets for the flight, uh, flight stack for your ES400 EC and the flight controller. So taking a look at the motor, it does come with this little packet of uh, screws and nuts. Fairly standard. And I could just tell just from the packaging, this is uh, very similar to a lot of the T motor stuff that I've reviewed in the past, including the stickers, but it just has the T Hobby branding instead of T motor. And you get very long motor wires here. Hopefully that's going to be enough for a 10 inch build. I'm uh, pretty sure it should be plenty fine. And then the motor bell itself has like a matte finish here with the uh, this sort of white paint on here with the name and you know, the Cine 66 Pro 1100 KB. The 1100 KB is also on the end of the motor here and it does have your standard M3 nuts there for your motors. And taking a look at the magnets and the windings, very big. There's a little bit of cogging but not a ton. Very smooth. The bearing is very, very smooth. You can see the little bearing holder there. And this is a 2812 size motor. So that's why the uh, eight and a half to nine inch uh, prop rating. I believe most people these days for a 10 inch build are going for the 3115 size motor, which is a bit bigger than this one, of course, to handle the, the you know, uh, bigger prop and more load. But I am gonna try this motor on a 10 inch prop down the road. So if you're wondering if this is gonna blow up or not, stay tuned, make sure you subscribe and you'll find out. But comparing it to, this is a T-Motor uh, F90 uh, long range motor, 1300 kV. This is a, I believe a 2806 size motor. So the stator is the same width, but the height is half of the Cine 66. So you know, this is about half the, the height. So 2806 versus 2812. And as you can see, it is roughly about half the size of the state, same stator. So you're gonna get quite a bit more power out of this one, which is gonna be needed for those larger props. This, this smaller motor here is gonna be more for a seven inch prop if you're doing a seven inch long range build. But just taking a look at the product page here, we'll find some specs on this particular motor. And in terms of the specs here, there are the dimensions, stator configuration, 133 grams, five millimeter shaft, very standard, 19 millimeter mounting pattern. It is rated for 6S, max power 1830 watts, peak current of 82 amps, max thrust of 4.1 kilograms, and then has a recommended setup here for the other parts. Anyway, it's gonna cover for this video for now. I will have a, a build video with the frame in a later video coming up soon. And of course, all the flight testing with the eight and a half inch and 10 inch folding props down the road. So make sure you're, you're subscribed and stay tuned for those videos. Got any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.